Hello, this is Michael Kraut with Idea Dudes. We're going to be talking about implementing a Windows activation infrastructure. Welcome to the presentation. If you have any questions or comments, you can put them in the Google box at the bottom of the video. Let's get started. Product activation types is one of the things that we're going to be looking at. Now, when we're dealing with Windows Server 2008, Windows Vista, or Windows 7, they're all going to have to be activated. And activation, what that does is that unlocks a lot of the different features that if you don't uh, register your product, you're not going to be able to use. So the different types of uh, activation we're going to look at. We have the implementing the Mac, which is the multiple access key activation. And we'll look at the disadvantages and advantages of the Mac. Implementing KMS, which is a key management system activation, we'll find out what's the difference between the Mac and the KMS. Why would we use the KMS? Why would we use the Mac? And we have a lab and exercises. So the product activation types, there's actually three of them. We have OEM, which that means original uh, equipment manufacturer. So for example, Dell, HP, Compaq, any of those different companies, which one, they develop their machines and they put the operating system on. That's called an OEM activation. So what you would do is you would start the uh, computer up, it would start the installation, and then you have to connect to the internet to activate the product. Then we have retail. That's when you go out to Tiger Direct, for example, or... Um, uh, any of your different fries or any of those different retailers that sell windows. When you go and buy it, then you have to go and connect to the internet again to activate. Then we have volume licensing. And volume licensing, this is when you're a Microsoft partner. Like we're a Microsoft Gold partner. So what we get access to any of the different uh, operating systems that Microsoft puts out. The same thing if you were to be a registered partner and you have the action pack. You pay $300 a year, you get access to $40,000 worth of software. Hmm. Well, that's what the volume activation. And volume activation, we have what is known as a Mac. And we also have what is known as a KMS. And we'll look at both of those. But OEM activation, yeah, this is BIOS bound. And what that means is connected to the actual GUID on the machine. So when you try to activate it on another machine, it's not going to work because it's connected to it. HP, Dell, and a lot of our other vendors do that now where so that uh, somebody cannot take their DVD and give it to somebody else to put the operating system on another machine because it looks at the BIOS and says, uh-uh, I don't see the key that I need to see. Out-of-the-box activations performed automatically with the computer when it's installed with the OS. Then we have retail. This is done if the product is bought from a retail store. Windows 7, Windows Vista, Windows 2008. There's a retail license key. That's a little gold key that you have on the back of the DVD. That key only allows you to activate that software. Activation is done over the phone, on the phone, or over the Internet. Volume activation, there's two t key types or types of keys. We have the multi, multiple activation key, which is known as the Mac. The Mac is an independent activation. Mac proxy activation. And all customers can use the Mac. So that means what we have is we have one key and allows us to be able to activate it so many times, less than 25. The key management server now that's another uh, system that we can use to activate a Windows environment or a Windows operating system. We have KMS activation requires 25 or more computers. So this is for the enterprise. Where the Mac is for the uh, small, small business, the KMS, the key management service, is for uh, medium-sized to large-sized businesses. So let's take a look at Mac independent activation. There's a two-step process. You enter the Mac on each computer, which is going to be the key. 
and then you activate the client use the VAMT or the telephone. So the VAMT is when we're going across the network and it says, do you have internet access so that we can activate this uh, version of Windows? Or you call up and you get a automated system for Microsoft that tells you that you need to put in the key, uh, read back the installation ID, and then the installation ID, uh, they give you a, a reference code that you put in, and that activates the product, and it says genuine Microsoft uh, product. Activating a core server is a little different, though, because we don't have a GUI. We have to do it through the command line. So we're going to use LS, SLMGR command is used. And so we do, to uh, insert the product key, we're going to do dash IPK, and put in a product key. And then to actually activate the server, then we're going to do SLGMR-ATL. And this is where the actual activation is done. So you have to insert the key first, then you have to run the actual activation. Now, Mac proxy activation, that's another way that we can do with the Mac. I use the VM VAMT to collect the installation IDs, and what we do is we save them to an XML file. Then we take that XML file, we go to Microsoft and obtain the uh, confirmation IDs, which are associated with the installation IDs. That's saved to that XML file, and then what happens is you use a VM VAMT to read the XML and update the clients. Now, what are the advantages and disadvantages of Mac? Well, the advantages include are easy for a small number of computers. But if we get into the enterprise, because there's a manual uh, type of situation, it's going to make it a lot harder. There's no infrastructure to set up. Remains forever activated unless the local hardware uh, changes. Those are the advantages, but there's no centralization in it involved. Disadvantages also, like I said, is manual key entry. Keeps track of the keys, keeping track of the keys because we don't have a centralized, we don't know which keys are on which machines. Now, KMS activation is used for when we have more than 25 clients. So this is for your medium size to your large enterprise type of environment. Automatic without contacting Microsoft, because what you do is you're going to activate the KMS uh, server. After you've activated the KMS server, from that point, it's going to be able to authenticate or to uh, authorize the machines to be activated. Only one key on the network. This is installed at KMS host. The computer's running the volume license additions. Uh, attempt to activate with the KMS. Reactivation is required every 180 days. Now, if the machine cannot get to the KMS, then the machine's going to go into a lower version of the operating system until you can activate that, uh, that client again or server. Client will attempt to connect every seven days. If it can't connect in 180 days, that's when it goes into a reserved type of uh, environment. Now, the minimum KMS client threshold or numbers is you have to have 25. So KMS activation requires a minimum number of physical computers. This is known as the KMS activation or KMS threshold. And this ensures that KMS is only used in an enterprise environment. We don't want to use this for small environments where they have less than 25 computers. So the KMS counts if it exceeds the KMS threshold then the KMS will self-activate. At least five physical computers, Windows 2008. At least 25 physical computers for Windows Vista and Windows 7. Virtual machines do not count when we're dealing with the KMS. So, one of the things that we have is we have what is known as host discovery. When you have a multiple access or multiple activation key, or I actually a volume license key. That client is going to have to go out and find the KMS. So it queries the DNS for SRV record named underscore VLMCS underscore TCPIP. 
which is going to point to the actual KMS server. The client must find this uh, SRV record and DNS. That's why it's required that we have DNS within our environment. The KMS will register itself dynamically when we uh, activate it. DNS must support automatic registration. So that's one of the things that's going to be the default with Active Directory integrated DNS. If the SRV is not created automatically, then an administrator must uh, do it manually. And it looks like underscore VLMCS underscore TCP underscore Contoso.com is an example. And it must have direct connection. So we can also do it through uh, activating the KMS through the command prompt, which is C script, percentage system root, percent, uh, system 32, slmgr.vbs, and the KMS dash host. So installing and configuring a KMS host, you install an enterprise volume key by running the uh, slmgr.vbs-ipk uh, key. Activate the KMS host. You do slmgr.vbs-atl. Activate by telephone. You start the Windows activation wizard, which is slui.exe. You need to ensure that the ports that uh, have to be open are 1688, is allowed through the firewall, and make any configuration changes to the environment. What's the advantages and disadvantages of the KMS? Well, the advantage is there's no configuration. KMS registers with the DNS. The client then automatically uses DNS to locate the KMS using the SRV record. The SRV record, once you activate the KMS, is automatically going to be created. The disadvantage is that you need 25 Windows Vista clients, Windows 7 clients, or five Windows 2008 servers. All clients must connect every 180 days. If they don't connect in 180 days, then the client will be disconnected from the uh, environment it's going to put it into a lower version of Windows so until they get to that point. So any shares, any programs that you have installed, you won't have access until you activate with the KMS again. So recap, Volume License Activation has, uh, with, works with Windows Server 2008 7 and Vista. 30 days is the limit for the activation. The Mac and KMS is available for volume licensing. The Mac for less than 25 computers. The KMS is for more than 25 computers. So you have a practice which is you're going to activate uh, Windows Server 2008. You're going to activate the server. It's going to be 30 minutes. If you have any questions or comments, you can put them in a go-go box. Thanks for joining us.